Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. I hope you guys are doing well. So I want to share with you three interesting videos. And uh, this first one, we're going to look at second. Because I think that when we look at uh, this one, which is, this comes from space.com. And this is coming from the International Space Station, as is the second video. And this shows a rocket launch, <clears throat> and it's really pretty cool. <clears throat> Excuse me as I lose my voice here. Okay, too much coffee in the morning, um, but I love my coffee. So watch this, watch this. Note the atmosphere of the Earth. Note the rocket you know, going out into space. Uh, note how it looks like it impacts um, the ether, or what we would call the ether. You know, we, we've been kind of given the feeling that space is empty in a vacuum. It's not the case. You know, it's it's full of life as well. But just watch this. This is really kind of cool. So we see the Earth rotating. And here we see the rocket launch. And we see the atmospheric layers. Oof, you know, it's it's separating, going to a different um, atmosphere there. And then, boom, probably letting go of boosters, and they drop back down. So you see here these coming back down into the Earth's atmosphere. Super cool, isn't it? Now, I'm going to show you something that's even pretty wilder in a moment but I just wanted to make note for instance of this glow right and um, let me show you this second one tell me what you guys think now this is supposedly filmed from the International Space Station as well and this is from a channel called Esoteric and Paranormal so let's watch this now, here we see an energetic layer over here, which I'm assuming is the energy from the Earth, the atmosphere from the Earth. And Cindy, what's your impression of what we're looking at here? Well, when I looked at it, it my heart chakra went off and my body started to relax like a relief type feeling, so it was very benevolent. So some people have said what we're looking at here is uh, perhaps Starlink satellites. Others have said this is a fleet of UFOs. You know, some were saying, oh, it's an invasion force. Um, I don't get that feeling. And I don't think we're going to be in invaded by uh, negative ETs. So I think that they've been here the whole time, the negative ones. Now we notice, for instance, some things don't move, they stay stationary, and we see other things moving. Now, af after having seen a triangular UFO myself way back, like 20 years ago, and thinking it was um, kind of like a bunch of separate ones and realizing that it was one big one, some of these could be a bigger ship going by and not necessarily individuals. But I thought this was super cool. I totally get a sense of relief when I watch that. And I'm just listening to my body with that one. I'm trying to kick the left brain out of it. Yeah. Look at like the cluster is up here. One thing to note too is, is if they pass, as they pass by and you see some of these clusters, notice if you could see anything past them because it could indicate that this is even perhaps one larger ship if you can't see anything past it like if lights go out as they pass some stationary ones if not then perhaps it is all separate 
So are these clusters of satellites in space, or are these actually ships in space? As I'm assuming, this is the glow coming from the Earth. Yeah, it just, I, I just brings me a sense of ease, you know? It's just, it's, it's comforting. It feels like, I don't know, it just feels good. Yeah, so I noticed I could still see these in the background as, as some of these passed nearer them, so that makes me think that it would be smaller ships. For the most part. So now with uh, Elon Musk sending up so many satellites in mass, of course, you know, everything, we're going to look at anything now and think, well, I wonder if that's a Starlink satellite, you know, because there's so many of them up there. And of course, we have Space Force, too, with the whole thought of militarizing space, which is perhaps a galactic no-no in the big scheme of things. So I wanted to share that with you guys. I thought this was really cool, and they have one other one that's super cool as well. And let's just take a look at this one more time from the beginning there. And um, please do give your comments. What's your feelings? Search your feelings. You know, and your feelings a lot of times will be truer than what the brain is thinking and analyzing. Yeah, definitely. Feel your body. Just kind of quiet your mind best you can and just feel what your body is saying. Kind of feel what your cells are, are telling you. And of course, on, on this channel, I've done about 2,000 videos, of which a big portion of them, uh, quite a substantial amount, have shown the just the obvious um, fact that we've never been alone. When you look at you know the historical record, the legends, all the artifacts, all the things you know as far as you know, we go to the medieval paintings. We could go to all the things that we've seen uh, drawn by Aboriginal people and natives and their legends. We've never been alone, and the thought that we are all there is—it's just life on Earth, and there's nothing else—is just it's it's completely. It's more than arrogant. It's just um, idiocracy, really. It, there's no way. There's absolutely no way. And um, you know, we're obviously, basically, you know, here with all sorts of different forms of life. To think that we are all that there is, yeah, it's it's the ultimate in arrogance. And it's not that everything has to be evil either because we see what rules the world is evil and you know those in control don't have our best interest in mind and they have always tried to keep us in the dark to the reality so of that so this is another one that's really interesting from the same channel that I wanted to share and this is watching the moon and uh, there's a lot of interesting things that we can see when we watch the moon as you see here so now this give me your impression Cindy this one felt more mechanical this one didn't feel so good um, this one felt like uh, it, it just feels man manish so more like Space Force or something like that definitely more like Space Force more like something that we probably wouldn't um, approve of. And so, you know, from all the research that I've done and then from my personal experiences, you know, I think that we are under the control of these beings that, you know, if you want to use biblical terms, uh, you could call it the devil, Satan, which means the adversary, um, you know, the dragon, the Draco, um, which, you know, there's also these what we have recognized as gray aliens that tend to work for them. They're just worker bees for the most part. The tall gray ones um, have a little bit more authority and I've seen one of those up close and personal. And, you know, they're real. And that's who our, our governments are in league with. 
whereas there are benevolent beings and many of them you know we would recognize as being such as pleiadians perhaps andromedans octurians syrians from sirius so yeah i get the same vibe to me these this is either ours which i think that we've had a space force quote unquote for a long time we know about the nazis way back in you know uh the 40s kicking admiral birds but with flying saucers with their technology that they got um again from some beings and there are some beings that are they look more pleiadian you know like us nordic type that are under control of the draco as well because they've been conquered by them and and are basically enslaved by them so to speak as is the situation here on earth so pretty cool video and i think that you know the timing of space force is such that they know that now we're gonna they're gonna have to be out there more in the open because i do feel that there are good guys and there are good guys coming and uh, not that they're gonna necessarily battle them in space which we have if we look at the mahabharata the ramayana the ancient vedic texts they talk about these battles in space and on the earth between benevolent beings the devas and not so benevolent the asuras and we could look at those as battles of the pleiadians and other allies against the draco and so with this reign of terror that has been upon the earth uh coming to an end because it is going to come to an end and uh, if you want to go biblical as we said before hey you know woe to you earth and sea because the the devil the dragon the draco comes to you with great wrath knowing that their time is short and what's going to happen well if we if we look at the hopi legends you know the benevolent ones the white pahana the benevolent beings that taught us how to grow things and be civilized and live in harmony with the earth and nature are going to return and they're going to return in order to correct the mess that's left after the destruction of the system that we find ourselves in right now so i wanted to share those videos with you guys Keep your spirits up, keep your hearts up, keep looking up. There's a great change that's underway on this planet. Indeed there is, and <clears throat> get in touch with your heart center. That's super important right now. As always, my friends, God bless and namaste. Namaste.